Welcome back. Today we are going to see what it takes to get a good source of dragon blood. More specifically, how to get the draconic fusion crafter. That thing requires end game materials from all of the magic mods. So let's get started from the first item, the bloody Icarium fusion casing. And all magic mods are rebalanced around Thamcraft. So here we are. After getting a witch's oven, we start extracting random breaths from saplings. Then we farm some questionable plants to get the ingredients to make a nice soup. Okay, just kidding, that's not edible. We just made some compost. A really weird compost, since, instead of growing plants, it mutates them. And those mutated plants will give off a whiff of magic when burnt. Which is required for an attuned stone, required to craft Greg's altar, thus finally allowing us to start blood magic. This is a really funny mod that is all about taking blood tests. You just have to keep puncturing yourself until you almost faint out. And then we soak items inside that pool of tomato sauce. However, all of those blood losses are not healthy. So we made a personal healing nano booster to keep in check. And we charge it wirelessly. With that, we can now have some peak gameplay. Just look at how much life essence or mouse with a weight stuck on it is making. We just have to change the items in the chest every now and then, until we rush the whole tier 5 altar. But then we find out we also have to do other things for our dragon blood blocks. But since we are blind and can't see there's a missing chalk, we shall go back to witchery in frustration. Here we rush an altar to power the distillery we rushed without taking recordings. But, to do some quests, we make a kettle and start brewing some potions of love. Which is somehow part of a sleeping potion. Guess you gotta love sleeping. And, after taking a nice sip, we lose all of our stuff. And I don't understand how that's a nightmare any more than doing those magic mods. Anyways, that didn't seem to be required for getting what we needed, some chalks. So we just skip quests and get those which we use to make a ritual helper. Which isn't really helping much. Anyways, after figuring it out, we managed to make the magic circle appear and produce a blood-powered sword. With that, we collect some weak shards that will be required later on. Then, to stop having to do peak gameplay, we build the Well of Suffering. That thing will make blood using mobs. And it can even work with a mob farm. Finally we no longer have to stuck ourselves onto that annoying thing. And we move it below our main altar. Now, while our blood passively builds up, we can go summon a demon, so that we can kill him to get some shards. Next we start melting random stuff to make some colorful lamps. Which we place on our newly built altar. Once every lamp shoots the center, we can start the new ritual, the Convocation of the Damned. And when the pyrotechnics are done, we can sacrifice a demon on top of it, thus creating a portal that will start building an ever-expanding town. This place will spawn the demons that will drop the shards we needed. And since we will need a lot, we set up an industrial mob farm for those. The first usage shall be making an Icarium block which we soak into blood right away. And that was the first part of our Draconic Crafter. The second one is more neat and requires the funny flower mod by Vazkiai. So we start making a stone pot for watering the funny flowers. We use that to merge some random flowers into other flowers. And the first mutated flower shall be a pure daisy, which can enchant blocks around it. With those new blocks, we can craft a mana pool, where we can't even swim. And a mana spreader, that will concentrate mana into beams. With those two and a couple more of flowers, we start filling up our pool with mana. And I have no idea if this is even working or how much mana we are making. But the real question here is why we are doing that. Never mind, let's follow the guide to get the Gaia plate for our draconic crafter. After throwing stuff into our mana pool, it turns more bluish in color. And that blue stuff was needed for our combustion generator plant. 
that plants turns burnable fuels into mana at the price of lag and items despawning. However, that mana was still not enough. Luckily, Avarisha came in our help, with a nice plant that does not cause lag nor other annoying things. Next, instead of filling a pool, we use our mana on an altar to craft runes. And here we have some more peak gameplay, watching random items jumping around a stone while taking shoots from some random wood contraptions feeding from random flowers. And since we are going to do this just a dozen of times, all with different recipes, I see no point in even looking into if there is a way of automating that thing. Once it starts sparkling, we can throw in a rock and complete the process. We repeat that funny peak gameplay process for 50 times, 4 for each rune we can make, and then we hope we will never ever have to do that ever again. Once we have all the runes set on a thumbcraft altar, we infuse those into a terrestrial agglomeration plane. Which, once again, will ask us to drop 4 items on it and hope they don't despawn before the process of unknown duration is completed. To avoid risks, we instead use a pool as a buffer and some sparks to make random lights turn on, so that we can lag in FPS other than TPS. And that yielded us some terra steel. And we had to spam a lot of things to make more at a decent speed. And the thing we use that terra steel for is an elven portal, which is a portal that we throw trash in to get some trash out. With that new trash, we can craft the Gaia Bylons required to summon on annoying boss. Unlike the rest of the mod, this boss doesn't have any color or cool looking particle. And it is also immune to projectiles, for some reason. After defeating it, we are rewarded with some Gaia Spirit, which we use to make our fist Gaia Spirit ingot and summon a friend of the previous boss. And now we just farm more of those annoying things, until we have enough for the dense Gaia plate required for our Draconic Fusion Crafter. Once we build the new machine, we quickly make one Ender Dragon Egg, then, we can make the Dragon Blood out of mundane materials. But, once we tried to do so, we run into an issue, we need to bring this machine up to tier 3. That requires Wyvern Fusion casings, which we can almost do. The main issue there is that we need a mining module MK3 for our space elevator. And while crafting that was an easy task, to use it, we also need MK3 space elevator motors. And those are going to require a couple of weird materials which we shall make in an appropriate sci-fi high-tech episode. So, what's the lesson there? Yeah, after all, maybe, bees are not that annoying to make, use or manage. And they are also evolving and starting to make electronics. So, see you next season for Motor B. Bye bye.